Hey, Posture Pals was the definitive last word on posture. Did ancient Toastmasters make this film? <laughs> Professor Bueller's day off. <laughs> there were a lot of forensics going on in Kansas in the 50s. The ear is the human organ the public speaker is most likely to try to impress as he makes a speech. After the human nipple. But did you ever think of the importance of the eye? The importance of what the listener sees as well as hears? The eyes of Kenneth Mars. Now just suppose you were a beautiful doll with rosy cheeks and big blue eyes. Okay, uh, a doll that never talks. Just do what he says. Or a tree that basked in the warm sunshine and rustled in the breeze. A tree that never spoke. Now you're a can opener, metal and shiny and taciturn. Or suppose you were a spring flower, contrasting your gay colors with the blue sky. I'm not a flower. You know how you would be judged? You'd be judged mostly by your appearance, by the way you look. By the kind of car you drive. Appearance is the basis upon which a little girl chooses a new doll. I like this one because it's whiter. <laughs> a man's prosperity is often judged by the appearance of his home, and thus is man himself judged. Yes, that's Eisenhower's America. Yes, appearance is important. There, I said it. I'd say it again if I had to. Mm -hmm. Appearance is a powerful factor. I learned that the hard and way. Appearance is something you can control. Remember, appearance has a pair in it. In public speaking, your appearance may make the difference between a good speech and a poor one. Your appearance may help convince your audience you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Or it may convince them you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, of course, I don't know what I'm talking about. A good appearance is something that everyone should strive for. <sighs> something everyone can accomplish. Uh, let me just get my notes here. I know I had something else. It begins with the feet. Mm -hmm. Seems strange, but having your shoes shined will help you make a better speech. It will help your general appearance and make you feel better. Plus, the polish gets you high. Then you should have your suit cleaned and pressed just for your talk. This will help you look successful. Hey, honey, you're supposed to take the paper off. Be sure to wear a clean shirt. Be sure to get a brand new chin. And your favorite tie. Now you're ready to rub out Sonny Corleone. Be sure your hair is neat and clean and you're all ready to go. Make sure your part is gouged into your skull. <laughs> Yes, sir, you're all dressed up and you're ready to go. You feel great, but wait a minute. There's a lot more to appearance than just having your necktie straight, your hair combed and your teeth brushed. The most important one element of your appearance is your posture. Not that it helps this guy any. <laughs> your posture may be more convincing to your audience than the words you say to them. Depending upon your posture, this can be good or bad. Because your audience subconsciously judges you as much by what they see as what they hear you say. And they'll see you before they hear you. <coughs> the effectiveness of a brilliant speech oh, can be greatly diminished oh, by poor posture. <coughs> Why? Because we like you. Because your audience thinks about what they see as well as what they hear. It's the village of the damned. If your posture is poor, your audience thinks. This poor fellow isn't sharp. He's weary and confused. He doesn't care about us, and he probably doesn't know what he's talking about. And you, you are puzzled. Why has your speech failed? Uh, ever seen a one-eared elephant? Mr. You don't look good, that's why. What your audience sees is so bad, they can't hear what you're saying. He's got Patty Duke's dad in his contact lens. Now, good platform posture can be accomplished by anyone, with a little effort and concentration. Good posture is first a physical matter. The body should be held erect and tall, with the head up. Secondly, good posture is a matter of the mind. Your mind. In your thinking, you must convince yourself you will think tall, talk tall, Stand tall and walk tall. Shave tall, jump tall, and crouch tall. <laughs> Remember that you must think tall, mm -hmm. talk tall, uh -huh. stand tall, stand, yeah. and walk tall. This will help you with your posture and your speech. What if you're Robert Reich? No. Now, good posture serves more of a purpose than just making you look better. It helps you to be comfortable because mm -hmm. it keeps you well balanced on the platform. America first! Poor balance, along with poor posture, 
causes some of the characteristic types of speakers you have seen. This type knows his subject and has good control of his voice. But look at him. He looks almost too tired to stand up. Do women be different than men? Word. He balances first on one leg, then on the other. Ah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's really very good. <laughs> He's the tired farm horse type. She's an energetic city girl. Can they get along in the suburbs? <laughs> then there's Miss Prim, the speaker who stands straight, tall, and rigid. She seems to be afraid she'll break, and she looks frightened and excessively formal. And yet startlingly erotic. <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely? She keeps her feet clamped tightly together. Enough said. We know her as the telephone pole type. <laughs> Next, we have the He-Man athletic type. Grandpa? You haven't seen him. He stands with his shoulders back and his stomach out and his feet wide apart. He looks undignified, and soon his awkward posture tires him. He'll do and he change. rocks back and forth for relief. The lion senses his weakness and close in, chewing at his hamstrings. <coughs> He's the rocking horse type. She's a straight-back chair type. Can they get along? <laughs> Lastly, we come to the type who leans. He leans on the table, back of a chair, or anything handy. In trying to be nonchalant and at ease, he makes himself thoroughly uncomfortable. The belching doesn't help either. Yeah, plus, he's leaning on the people in the front row. He is the turtle type. Mm -hmm. All four common types look awkward, partially because they're off balance. Good balance results from having the bodily weight well distributed on both feet and in having the feet just the right distance apart for comfort. You can determine this distance by making the knee test. I will not make the knee test. <laughs> Place the palms of your hands on both knees. Wait, I'm kidding. Make an easy circular motion with the hands and knees. Until you're incredibly turned on. <laughs> if your feet are the correct distance apart, the weight will be evenly distributed as you change position. You'll be well balanced and comfortable. You'll look poised and dignified. Uh, no, you won't. With your feet too far apart, you'll have difficulty in standing up. Because you're off balance, you may fall either forward or backward. Don't do this during the speech. With your feet too close together, you're still off balance, and you're uncomfortable. That's fine. Security! That's really nice. Security! Uh, is your speech over, Mr. Johnson? Uh, good. Tread until you find the easiest and most comfortable position. Then note the location of your feet. Yeah, that's it, baby. Shake that moneymaker! Always try to keep your feet in this position when you are speaking, and you won't have to worry about balance. And with good balance, You've conquered another phase of good appearance. Now remember that appearance is important. You must appear, and you must have matter. And that good appearance is easily accomplished. Except by Denny Dillon. Just remember to think tall, mm -hmm. talk tall, ah. stand tall, mm -hmm. and walk tall, and to achieve good balance. Mm -hmm. For good mm -hmm. posture and appearance will greatly increase your ability as a speaker and a leader. And remember to always leave your area at home. My posture is good. Ah!